Yo Rory, Y O R O I, Yo Rory. Yo Rory, Yo 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 Rory. Yeah, Yo Rory. Wow. Um, it has both Kiko and a Fokoyo, so it's called a Yo Rory. All right, welcome back to the channel, the Cactus Quest channel. Before you do anything, make sure that you hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date with the videos that I'm putting out. And thank you for being here. Today is a very special episode. Uh, I think I'm gonna call it Cultivar Quest because today I'm with my friend Jack here and we are at his home in Temecula guys. and uh, we're getting ready to take a look at I mean the plants that are behind me are kind of jaw-dropping already so we're getting ready to go into the greenhouse and see exactly what he's doing and how he's right. doing it all right here we go let's check it out holy <laughs> well this is yeah. another one Okay, so I'm just gonna turn the camera around so you guys can see what, <laughs> what I'm looking at. I mean, first table. Hey, look at that. Look at all these areocarpus. Areocarpi? Is that what you say when there's a ton of them? <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever you say. So tell me what. Uh, tell me a little bit about your setup here, man. What well, are you doing? Well, the the this is the only greenhouse that we have here, and uh, inside this greenhouse we have mostly. Areocarpus and Astrophytum and all, you know, also some other stuff, but mostly Areocarpus and ast Astrophytum. Incredible. Yeah. And we focus mainly on the cultivars, and you know, there are a lot of cultivars from the Asian countries for these two genus. Yeah, absolutely. So how long have you been doing this? Uh, about, about six years. Okay. And uh, a lot long, but we have put a lot of time and energy uh, into this uh, this hobby. I, I gotta just say, just from uh, walking in initially, this is one of the, uh, aside from the plants, just the organization. <laughs> Everything is so well organized and so beautifully arranged and put together. It's very satisfying to look at everything in here. Thank you. My uh, greenhouse is, uh, uh, a, a lot messier, <laughs> I'll definitely say. So are these some of your seedlings here? Uh, no, they are uh, some of my mother plants and some sort of seedlings and, and uh, uh, here and there, I can I can tell. Oh, okay, yeah, yes. okay, I see some seedlings. Yeah, some seedlings over there. Because uh, I just moved to this house like a year ago and before that I didn't have a stable environment. So I, you know, my survival rate for the seedlings is not good. Right. So, yeah, so, uh, I'm planning to build a, a germination chamber uh, soon so I can grow a lot of seeds. And I already have a lot of seeds, you know, collected. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, waiting to be, uh, to be sold. So now, are you, because uh, I've been following you on Instagram for a while now, so you, you are obviously growing and collecting, but do you also sell plants? I do sell plants, and uh, we do sell on uh, eBay, okay. at sea, and uh, also on Instagram, also on Facebook, here and there, and uh, yeah. What was your first plant? Like, what was the? How did you? How did it all get started? Because this is six years. This is uh, yeah, really a, quite a beautiful collection. <laughs> I mean, I'm one of, I've seen a lot of really beautiful collections, and I mean, this is like, one of the just initially uh, just looking at it one of the most beautiful ones i've seen all right thank you thank you so yeah. how did it start what was like your first what was your gateway plant well yeah and um, i will say i started with home depot yeah for <laughs> sure. like most of us we get uh, our h as the lithops over there and uh we thought wow this is a wonderful plant you know so we keep just keep buying and uh a uh, couple months later, we learned that was an uh, intercity show. Okay. I went over there, was like, whoa, this, there are a lot more than we can get from Home Depot. Yeah. And I, then I got into it. And uh, I w if, if it's a uh, first plant, I would say uh, this is the first plant that got me into our couples. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, that's a very nice, very really nice. nice tight tubercles. Yeah. And uh, I got this from Woody. Yeah. By that time, I didn't know him. I went to this sales in um, a Fullerton uh, uh, Arboretum. Yeah. And he was a seller in there like six years ago. He was an old man sitting in the corner. I didn't know him by that time, uh, but I would see him with uh, a lot of plants surrounding him. Right. And, uh, and I found this one. Guess how much that was? 
I'm gonna guess like 40 bucks. Right on. Is 35. it 35? 35. And he was telling me. How much does that sting, you guys, to right. know that that plant right. was for $35? And uh, he was, he told me, this is $35. You're the guy who's getting it. But guess how, how long it took, uh, you know, to get here. He was, he, he said it was uh, 30 years. Yeah. Yeah, about that time. Because uh, Woody, uh, you're going to grow uh, his plant the hard way. Yeah. So to get to this size of, a, you know, it's 30 years. So this is my first time, uh, my my my, uh, uh, my first aracopus. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, and uh, and so you're, I mean, looking at your plants, especially if I'm comparing it to the last incredible greenhouse I was in, which was the Mesa Gardens video, the, yeah. like those plants there are what I would call the epitome of hard grown. Definitely, I absolutely love. Like I don't have any real preferences. It's just like. Uh, my friend Kelly Griffin says that his favorite plant is the one that he's looking at. And that's, I really, I, I subscribe to that kind of ideology, I think, to a certain extent, because yes. it's just really the moment of what I'm seeing is what I'm in love with at that moment. Um, but, I mean, what we're looking at here would be like, and I talked about this in the video I just put out at the CSSA sale, is that your plants are so wonderfully cultivated Right. They're, they represent really the potential to me of what the plants have lying in, mm -hmm. in kind of like in uh, dormancy within their genetics. This right. is what's possible, you know? And so when you really grow them and you push them and then you start to breed them yeah. for these kind of different uh, features and these different kind of little peduncles and bumps and all this crazy stuff you come up with all these amazing cultivars it is incredible okay so it's astrophytum areocarpus and what's what's the other main staple in here i see some euphorbias yeah euphorbias i have a lot of euphorbias so i'm sure kevin uh, really enjoyed that <laughs> yeah yeah he he was here once and he uh he saw a lot of plants that he like and uh, I got a lot of euphobia like um, uh, I got a euphobia pisodermis cluster over there I'm trying to root right now oh yeah yeah and they're doing very good right now I think they already take roots that's awesome yeah and uh, so with uh, all of these plants right uh, you know I hear a lot that areocarpus is very difficult to care for what is uh, what is your care regimen look like everyone is very curious everyone is always asking in the right. comments you know what's their soil type now we're we're in the what would this area be called of southern california we're like in in kind of one of the most southern parts of southern california right so it's you get it's very dry here yeah yeah pretty dry pretty hot and uh and you don't really get any freezes or anything nope no so what is your soil mix like with these guys? Well, generally, my soil mix is 70% uh, of pumice, and uh, the rest, the 30%, I would use just for some random cactus soil I got from Home Depot here and there. Okay. So I'm not very strict with uh, my soil recipe, but uh, I would use um, you know, a lot of pumice in there you know, to cr increase the drainage. But for me, our compass is not that hard. Uh, uh, actually, they grow, uh, they grow very well for me uh, than astrophytum. You find astrophytum to be trickier? Uh, uh, yeah, for sure it will be trickier. Uh, maybe I don't have the right way. I'm tr still trying to you know, find the right way for them. But, now, is, uh, it, is it, do you find that you have the majority of your problems with Asterius? Or is it kind of across the board with... Uh, just astrophytum in general. Yeah, astrophytum, asterisk, myostigma, they have different problems. And uh, what I found with astrophytum is the bigger plant, the adult plants, they have, uh, you know, uh, a bigger rate, uh, you know, to die uh, from spring to summer when the temperature increases. And for myostigma, I'd be more careful with the seedling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for myrostigma, they, they, they survive very well when they're big. No problem at all. Yeah. It's the seedlings you have. It's because I, I sadly, and I actually, I made a couple of little posts about it, but I sadly lost 
several of my um, Astrophyta Myriostigma. Okay. This, this, this transition from winter into spring into summer. Yeah. And I actually, I did, I did move the plants, which I think was a huge factor. I moved them from a drier area to a more humid area, and it, I think that that just kind of played a role in it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, and, and I, on that post, there's like 50-some-odd comments of everybody saying that they have the same problems with, <laughs> with Asteria. So they're like, you know, a little suicidal, I guess. Right. Um, so, and then you have a, a very pumice-heavy mix. What's right. your watering schedule um, look like? In well, the growing season. Yeah, generally it's, um, uh, right now, uh, it's once a week. Okay. And uh, in fall or spring, it will be twice, I mean, uh, once every two weeks. And in winter, uh, it will be once a month. Gotcha. Yeah, so I do water in winter. I now, think all those cactus, they need water in winter to maintain the vitality of the root systems, right? So they can have a, fa a speedy recovery when the temperature, uh, you know, goes up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let me ask you this then: um, You're watering once a week in the peak, twice a week in the in the fall, right? Once a month in winter. Right. But how do those do those waterings vary at all? And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is I'm going to go based on the assumption that when you water your plants right. during the uh, peak season, that you're giving them a good soaking. Definitely. And the water is draining all the way through coming out the bottom. Definitely. Okay. So then now what about your winter watering? Is right. that the same or is that, is it lighter or can you tell me a little bit about that? Definitely. Uh, for winter is definitely to be different. Okay. Because winter, the purpose of winter watering is to keep the vitality of the root system. Right. It doesn't have, have to be a deep soak. As long as there, uh, you know, the, the, mo uh, the soil is moist. Right. That would uh, do the job. So, so for winter, uh, when I see the water comes out of the, out of the bottom, I, see, I know it's, it's good. Okay. But for uh, in summer, when those plants are still, you know, uh, are, are active, the, it needs a very good soak. Right. Because what I notice for those plants is, uh, uh, if if the, you, if I give them a very good soak, make sure all the soil is a hundred percent moist. You know, uh, they look different the second day. Yeah. Yeah. But if I just stop when I see water come out of the bottom. Uh, the it doesn't look so good on the second day or uh, or uh, uh, you know uh, so yeah that's what I do okay and also when the pot you know for, for a big plant like this size they probably need a, like you know every watering every uh, two weeks in okay. summer because gotcha. uh, you know the, the pot is bigger the plant is bigger right but when the plant is in the smaller pot like this right yeah, I would water like four, uh, four days, uh, once every four days. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I find that with my seedlings, I I will water them more. Yeah, they're, definitely. They're in a. I mean, it's like with babies. I mean, you you got two little boys. I've got two little boys. <laughs> right. They, my two little babies, eat. <laughs> they eat, you know, and they. I mean, especially when they're really little. Yeah. In the, in the seedling stage, when they're still nursing, I mean, they nurse. Definitely. You'd, you'd think, my goodness, can they ever stop? You know. You made a very good point. You know, the babies eat like seven times a day. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> like bodybuilders or something. <laughs> so then, one last question on the watering, because I'm I'm curious, and I know every if I'm curious, I'm sure that there's shared curiosity out there. Right. Are you hand watering these with a plastic watering can or a, like a watering can or something, or do you have a it, an infusion system mm -hmm. with a nozzle and a shower sprayer or something like that. What no, are you using to water? Right now I use hand watering. Okay. Okay. But, you know, uh, in, the thing is, because I'm I, I, sooner or later I'm, I'm going to use the automatic system, you know, to do this. Because every week, right now, every week I spend three hours watering everything. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of time. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're preaching to the choir, man. I right. have a gigantic greenhouse, and I got a. It's like ridiculous. It's and yeah. I'm doing it by hand. It's preposterous. Yeah. It takes yeah. me hours. And yeah. Hours. Right now, what I do is I water three times every every time. I mean, 
one time to give them, you know, uh, I use the, the tap water. Okay. I spray them. When I see them, you know, the, bo uh, the bottom comes out of water. That's my first time. My, my first time. Second time, I do that again. Hopefully, you know, all the soil will be, you know, much more moist uh, after the second time. Okay. Third time, I don't use tap water. I have, I use uh, like um, uh, a can or like a 20 gallon can. Yeah. Put it, uh, uh, acidify the water and I put a fertilizer if there's any. I fertilize twice a year, th three times a year. I, I use, uh, I put a, a systemic in there, pesticide. Do you do that with, you don't, you don't do put a systemic in there all the time, do you? No, no, twice a year. <laughs> okay, okay. Once in spring, once in uh, 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 before winter. Okay. And also, I, sometimes I put fungicide in there. Okay. You know, so the, the third watering is I put a stuff in there. So let me, I want to I wanna just, because I, I think I understand what you're saying, and it's right. very interesting to me. Because uh, I, I haven't come across anyone that does it this way, but it's, yeah. it's really it's really interesting. So each watering, right. each weekly watering consists of three waterings. Yes. Two with tap to essentially prime the soil. Yes. And get it moist. Yes. And then a final third watering with yeah. acidified water and any kind of nutrients yes. and or pest control Yes. Okay. Wow. Yes. That's that's really interesting. You know, uh, I gotta say, looking at your plants, mm -hmm. it's you. Uh, they obviously are responding quite well to it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. That's fascinating. Yeah. The the reason why I do that because I developed this method uh, recently. You know, previously I just follow the rules. You know, the general rules that people follow. Uh, but now I, r I realize if I just use once, uh, you know, one watering and, you know, when, uh, when I see water come out of the bottom uh, and I stop, most of the soil in there are st very dry. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you don't really, get, even if water, yeah, I, I know what you mean because I have watered plants and you get water coming out of the bottom because I would water a lot of times before I'd repot something, you know? Yeah. And then you get it out and you're like, geez. Yes, Did I water it? You yes, know? that's right. That's interesting. Right. Really interesting. So, I mean, you guys think about that for a second. Um, but before you think about that, ADD is kicking in. <laughs> He's got stuff. Look at all the actual curry. <laughs> but uh, we're back in the greenhouse here. And uh, I just I just want to take a moment, just a plant appreciation moment here. Look at this thing. You've got the star-shaped Astrophytum Super Kabuto. And then it is shooting off... I mean, it's offsetting off the aerials, like they're, it's blooming new plants. Right. That That's is incredible. That's actually uh, Hannah Zono. Hannah Zono. That's uh, actually a uh, Hannah Zono. Hannah Zono means uh, it has multiple, uh, you know, flower point. You know, oh. you, uh, you, can, you can see it from, from, from here. Yeah, 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 yeah. It can flower from everywhere. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And so those, that's a Japanese hybrid, yep. Definitely, yes. Now, do you know anything about like, it's called Hanazono. Do you know, I mean, I'm assuming Hanazono is the grower that originally cultivated that plant, or do well, you know, do you, are, you, are you well versed in some of the uh, cultivar lore as it yes. is? Well, uh, the thing with those Japanese cultivar is uh, the Japan growers are very private growers. They don't, they are not willing to give out too much information regarding you know how they grow things and uh, uh, the, the whole processes. Right. That's why in the past uh, years, you know, the cultivars are very, you know, uh, rarely seen. Oops. Yeah, they, they are rarely seen, and uh, until you know the Thai growers start to distribute a lot of plants from the Japan. So yeah, so. Uh, the, a lot of stories I don't know. Uh, for example, the Godzilla. When I ask people where the Godzilla is from, nobody knows. Right. And uh, and uh, I I uh, and uh, about two years ago, I talked to a Japan grower. I uh, I can't disclose his name, uh, but he he told me that the Godzilla is made by a master grower called Mr. Sato. Sato. Yes. 
I've yeah. heard that name before, actually. Yeah, Mr. Sato. But nobody knows that he created Godzilla. Even Godzilla was the number one cultivar of our covers. But nobody knows he was the creator. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Shrouded in mystery. Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, that's very interesting. You would think, you know, a lot of people that would create something like that would probably have the opposite mindset and would want to be very uh, out there with it and would want the world to know, like, hey, I made this, you know? That's right, that's right. I, and uh, I have to talk to a lot of growers from, um, uh, preferably from Japan, to know their story. So Godzilla is... Godzilla. We're talking about Aerocarpus Godzilla, which Godzilla is essentially a extreme, extreme cultivar of Physaratus, yes? Yes. Essentially, right? Yes. And so this is Godzilla. So this, these are among the most sought after yeah. uh, cultivars in the Aerocarpus world. So for those of you that know what's up with Aerios and with Godzillas, you know this is, this is like uh, insanity. My yeah. goodness, look at these two. I mean, they... It's and what may why they call it Godzilla if you can't tell by looking at it. I mean, you know, think about what Godzilla looks like and then look at that thing. Whereas if you look at a the original um, parentage, you've got Physaratus, which is this guy here. So if you look here, Physaratus, you can see kind of where where it came from and where it's at now, right? So this is this is what it is to cultivate plants and to. Uh, selective breed over really generations of plants with with Aerocarpus, one thing you could certainly assume probably safely about Mr. Sato is that he's got to be an old man because to be able to cultivate these plants uh, even on graft they're still not speedy plants they're still very very slow even on graft so I just am always struck by the amount of time and uh, stick with itness, if you will, that it takes to um, end up with something like a cauliflower or with uh, a Godzilla or any of this kind of stuff. Now, I have one question. As I, we were walking in here, I noticed you have a bucket uh, with water and there's area, uh, astrophytums floating in it. Is this a uh, rooting methodology that you have uh, been utilizing or? Well, it's, it's, it, it is a rooting method, uh, method that, that, that I use. This is called you know the water therapy and uh, uh, people use different ways for water therapy but I use it when a plant has a hard time to root yeah because I put this in pure pumice this mm -hmm. plant this uh, astrophytum asterius yeah I put it in pure pumice and they keep shriveling right and uh, no root come out anywhere so so I know there's something wrong so I take it out and throw it in water most likely, in one or two days, new roots were coming out. Okay, yeah. Uh, some new roots coming oh, out yeah. of here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I see it. Yeah. A little tiny one, but it's there. Yeah, and Incredible. most plants that, that, that has a root, uh, show new root, I, I already planted it into, into the soil. Interesting. That's why you don't see much, uh, many uh, rooted plants here. Yeah, but you see one. It's new roots coming out. Yeah. Okay, so after you do this, after you see new roots, put it into the soil and water it right away and put it under shade. Because you want the plant to regain the ability to root. Because uh, if, if you don't do it uh, this or if it, if, if it uh, doesn't root for uh, you know uh, another a week or it will die. Yeah, it will try, you know, so. Well, I got to say, I'm officially a, uh, a convert. I'm going to try. I have never done the water therapy. I've been very, very resistant to it for what I don't not really sure why. I just I had never seen it. I know people that do it, but I had never seen it. So I guess I'm going to try because I've had issues where that would have been fantastic. Yeah. And you're just and it just sits in pumice forever and ever and ever. And it yeah. just never seems to quite root really. Yeah, this is where, where it comes from. So I plant, for example, this plant. I, I have a whole tree of it. I plant it in the pure pumice. I put it under sun. Because I think maybe the sun is too strong and the plant is, you know, overstressed. Mm -hmm. So the plant refused to root. So I just take it out, threw it in the water, one or two days, the new roots will show up. And then you and put it back in. Right back in and water right away. 
Okay, so with with uh, newer plants like that, you're you're not putting them into your normal soil mix until they're more established. Is that kind of what you're doing? Um, well, I'm still experimenting because right now I find that different plants love different soil mixes. Okay.